Hey folks, welcome to another AR video. Today we're checking out the setup for the brand new Nebula 2.0 release for the Unreal Light headset. Now for Unreal Light, I have had this beautiful little Unreal Light dev kit. It says Unreal on the sides, at least until Epic Games sues the name away from them. Hopefully that won't happen. I know that that's an ongoing legal procedure at this time. Uh, but I've had it for roughly eight or nine months at this point, and it's been very difficult to work with. I, I got the developer kit, um, and it does come with a little compute unit. I've shown this on camera a couple of times. This is the compute unit. Um, and, and the compute unit has this little controller, this little disc that's supposed to emulate a phone. Unfortunately, that controller died very, very quickly. Um, so I haven't been able to do much testing or much actual uh, work with the device outside of I do have a globe app that I'm in the process of working to publish at this point. So, Nebula, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> up until this release, was also not really compatible with my phone. Um, I have a Xperia 5, the original Sony Xperia 5 here, not the Xperia 5 II, not a Japanese model. So, when Nebula and the Unreal Light uh, consumer release came out in Japan, it didn't really work with my phone. Um, so I'm excited now to try this new version of Nebula out. Uh, it says to please read the privacy policy and the terms and conditions. Um, we'll go ahead and click on those just for a moment so we can see what those say. To view the correct version of the privacy policy, pick your country. Still only says Germany, Japan, and Spain. I'm not in any of those countries, so I'm not going to select that. And viewing terms and conditions of service, again, selecting the country, I'm assuming it's going to be the same countries, yeah, Germany, Japan. Interesting how it says Spain now, though. Um, previously, the device was available in Germany, Japan, and Korea, and there's no Korean terms of service, so that's interesting. So go ahead and hit agree and continue. You can log in or sign up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip that for now because, again, I'm not in one of those three countries. Uh, it comes up in Spanish. That's interesting that it's requesting permission in Spanish at the top and then in English at the bottom. Um, so in order to make Nebula work, which I have done kind of in a hack job way in the past, you have to accept a bunch of hardware permissions on the phone device. Um, so it says to allow to take pictures and record video while using the app, record audio while using the app, manage phone calls while using the app, and allows access to the photos, media, and files on your device. We'll allow those. So now we have to go to the settings. Um, what this does is there's one master allow modifying system settings. We'll click that. And now if we go back, this is kind of cool that it says you can go to the Google Play Store to get these demos. I have Ghost Hunter for Unreal already installed, uh, but I don't have this return to base. So let's click on that. We can install that. That's going to be kind of cool to have. Uh, I have Styly already, and I don't have this Aaron AR. And it looks like that may have been either a Korean developer. Yeah, it looks like a Korean developer for, for that particular title. It does say Unreal Glasses right in the About This app, though. So it says My Unreal Light. Um, and it says MR Space. You can explore all the possibilities of mixed reality applications in MR Space. Try our recommended MR apps first. And there's two options at the bottom of the screen here, either MR Space or Air Casting. Now it's going to ask me to plug in my glasses to enter Nebula. So my glasses are the dev kit. I'm assuming it's going to actually say, hey, your glasses are old. Before it does that though, lots more permissions. And what I love is already in the glasses, it's showing the screen even before it accepts any of the permissions. So it's already doing the screen mirroring. And there it is. That's exactly what I expect to see. This is an older version of glasses. Please use the commercial version. 
Um, so now from here, I can actually jump into either the mixed reality space or air casting. Now with air casting, which is what I'm going to do first, what that's actually going to do is it's going to bring you to your home, phone's home page and you can switch between uh, apps just using your regular cell phone. So that's what we're going to do first. And as you can see, we've just installed Return to Base and Air and VR. Um, I can access my phone like you normally would. We can go to eBay and look at this $3,000 Vive I've been lusting after. Look at this original prototype headset owning VR history. And what I can see right now is in the center of the screen I can see this image. So if I turn and rotate my screen, um, it's now basically encompassing the full view of my eyes, which is awesome. So even though I'm not in any type of mixed reality application right now, um, I can look at these pictures of this old Vive DK on an eBay site. Incidentally, I have a Vive DK that's shipping to me. We'll be talking about that next week, hopefully, as long as it arrives this week. I did not spend $3,000 for mine, though. And I don't recommend anyone spending $3,000 for this particular device. But these controllers are something I remember, and these lighthouses are something I remember, which, you know... Seeing these pictures is pretty cool, um, but again, I don't recommend $3,000 for the Vive DK system. Yeah, and you can see my videos here. Nice big it screen view of myself. Video. Today, Today, I'm going to update my Oculus avatar, avatar, as you can see the one here in the corner. Works pretty well, um, and it's a nice big screen view in front of me, which is great. Um, and as the screen rotates on Air Receiver, the program I'm, I'm actually sharing to the PC with, it's also rotating here on the device. So I've got either a kind of a centered screen in the middle or a wide screen. And this wide screen goes to about here and here. It's a very, very sharp image, very good visual. So what's going to change on the screen that you're going to see is you're going to see a controller image pop up. So this is the Enreal Light controller on the phone. And what I see in my glasses is the Welcome to Nebula screen. So this is the Welcome to Nebula screen here. It says your phone is your controller. To reset the laser, you long press the home key. We'll do that. And then to select tap the touchpad area, we'll do that. And then it says dissolve the objects, aim with the laser and click the touchpad. We're gonna dissolve each of these objects. And then click home, that can rest home in front of you. Click again to hide and in the MR apps, you can call up the exit menu. And don't forget to choose the right nose pads. The commercial version comes with four nose pads. Mine only came with three. And that's it. Now you can enjoy your journey in Nebula. This is a Nebula menu now. As you can see, I've got a bunch of web bookmarks. And then I've got Giga AR. Um, and then a bunch of my own applications for the... AR applications. So we've got the Air and AR we just installed. We've got Nreal QR code reader, table trenches, Infinity Space and Sandbox, which both came with the dev kit, Ghost Hunter, Styly, Four Glow, AR Global, which is my Globe app, Space Channel Five AR, and Return to Base. Unfortunately, I can't show any of those. But let's uh, let's pull up YouTube just very briefly here. And as you can see, we've got. A floating YouTube window, you can bring that closer and closer if you want to, or further away if you want to. It works pretty well, and, and you can put multiple windows up, so I can click here, and then I can uh, open the menu in front of it, and I can open Reddit in front of that if I want to, or behind that, or I can move Reddit further away or closer dock it over here if I want to. 
so I can move in between the apps. It's pretty fluid and works really well. So that's unfortunately about all I can show you regarding the Unreal Light Kit. Um, the screen recording function only works within Nebula, so if I try to launch an MR application, it will not work at all uh, at the current time. Maybe that'll change in the future. Some of those MR apps are definitely standouts. I really like the Ghost Hunter application. Styly actually makes me feel like I'm in other people's artwork. I can walk around and uh, a lot of it is very immersive and it's very cool. It's, it's mostly 360 and uh, spatially augmented videos, uh, but it's a very cool application. Uh, I'm looking forward to trying Return to Base and, and the other applications that I've recently downloaded and not played with because I didn't really have a working version of Nebula on my phone. I'm super excited to see Unreal increase their device support and have a more universal version of their application. Uh, I hope that it does lead to more success for them in the future. And I'm excited to actually jump in and play around with more MR applications in the future. One of the cool features within the air casting mode is you can actually just cast in one eye. So maybe even going out and playing Pokemon Go where you can still see with unobstructed view from one of your eyes and then see like the little HUD image basically of Pokemon Go in the corner on, on one eye it would be kind of a cool thing to try out. Or you know, navigation, if you're riding a bike or something of that nature, these kind of can act like sunglasses and then you can see a little Google map image or something of that nature in the corner. Um, I feel like the Unreal team has done a really good job. I know it's been a couple of years coming now at this point of putting together a package that, you know, you just plug in to the bottom of your phone here and it does its magic. Uh, I know Qualcomm's had a lot of hand in doing this too. When you plug in this little magical cable, uh, it, it does wonders. And, and I think that this little piece of technology right here, a wearable that feels like a pair of sunglasses, is just the tip of the iceberg. I think in the future, AR viewers or XR viewers or however you want to call them may one day self-contained replace a smartphone. I know that my ODG glasses does something very similar to that except it's just a prototype and there's not really much else I can add to it. But the Unreal Light, it's definitely a little bit lighter um, and it works just fine with a standard smartphone as long as you have the ability to do the display port uh, out uh, using the USB-C cable. And it does require, I believe, an 855 Snapdragon processor or higher at the current time. Uh, I have had mixed results using it with other older Snapdragon processors that do have that uh, display out. Uh, but if you don't have the display out, it's not going to work. So if you try to use a Google Pixel, for example, any type of Google phone, that display out is locked. You can't actually do it. Um, so unfortunately, it won't work with those phones. Uh, I have heard that it does work with some of the newer Samsung devices. So the range of devices at this point is growing. It works with some OnePlus devices, works with some Motorola devices, works with the Oppo devices uh, from the past couple of generations. So much more than just the two or three phones from multiple countries that it's worked with in the past, Super excited to see this more open and more accessible in the marketplace, and hopefully you'll be able to pick up an Unreal Light for yourself in the near future. Until next time, get out there and enjoy some VR for yourself, or some AR, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!